Welcome everybody to Survive in Advance on the Grueling Crew Sports Network. I'm your co-host for Survive in Advance, Mike Goodpasser. Right now, I want to welcome my co-host, member of the 1981 <laughs> National Champion, Indiana Hoosiers, Steve Risley. How you doing, Steve? Uh, another beautiful day in paradise. Everything's fine and dank. My Colt uh, got a big win yesterday, so I'm happy. I know uh, I know our guest is happy. How are you feeling, Mike? That's a ten dollar question about your your home team. I was oh, me. I was disappointed they didn't lose worse. Anthony, but... we haven't introduced you yet. Just shut up and wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve is known to be really nice to the guest. Um, and our guest today is on the FF Face Off on YouTube. He's and not Julie a guest. Cruz he's Sports a squatter Network. now. He's in our every Monday. He's not a guest anymore. He's a squatter. Yeah, we went we went over this last week. And yeah. help me welcome to the show. Anthony Servino. How you doing, Anthony? I am doing great after yesterday as well. All right. Yeah, you so... ought to just be, just, just shut up and take the win and walk away. I think that's what he's done so far, Steve. You don't have to be so mean. All right, let's start off with the Miami Dolphins and New England Patriots. I have to the... because we're playing this team next week. I've got to get some game hype going on here. Come the on. The Dolphins and the Patriots is what we're going to start off uh, with because I think right. that was – the biggest game of the day, just because of what happened. You had Bill Belichick, who I think most people with half a brain realize is maybe the greatest coach in NFL history. But for one day, he screwed wasn't. Up. He screwed up bad. He and he, it just started at the end of the first half, Anthony, where Tom Brady takes a sack, clock runs out, they get no points. Gostowski misses an extra point. Either one of those things turns into a field goal or an extra point. They win the game or they go to overtime. And then the thing that really got me, Anthony, was at the end of the game, they're 70 yards away, and they've got Rob Gronkowski in to make a play. And I'm sure they're thinking that it's going to be a Hail Mary pass. They want Gronk in to knock it down. Unfortunately, there's not too many quarterbacks that can throw the ball 75 to 85 yards in the NFL. And having Gronkowski in there instead of Devin McCourty was, I think, a crucial part of why they lost this game, Anthony. Yeah, I agree. And if they were anticipating a a Hail Mary, I get it. But like you said, like the, the distance, it, it wasn't in their favor. Gronk shouldn't have been out there. And I think, you know, just like what Kenyon Drake said in the post-game interview, when he saw he had to beat Gronk, it, it was like a wrap from there. He yeah, wasn't even worried. Yeah, and now the Dolphins are in the playoff conversation. I still don't think they're going to make it looking at the rest of their schedule. that I just don't think they're that good. Um, they beat New England four of the last five games in Miami. What's your take on New England right now, Steve? How much trouble are they in? Are they in trouble? or? I don't think you can ever discount Belichick and Brady. I mean, I, they're solidly in the playoffs. They're going to win their division. I mean, I this is a team that get serious when it has to get serious. I, you know, it's fun to watch the those two guys fail every once in a while and make bad judgments on both their parts. Um, but in the end, I still wouldn't bet against the Patriots at all. These guys are too good at what they do. They're still strong at what they do. This game really had little meaning to them, I think, in terms of t- tactical um, mentally going down there and having not won down there in four or five games. I understand that mentality, but I don't think it phases these guys. They go back and they get ready for the next week and they get ready for the playoffs. And right now they're probably making their Super Bowl hotel reservations right now. Well, I, I can tell you this. My opinion of this, and I'll go to Anthony on this, is this Patriots team is not going to the Super Bowl. They have one huge problem here. <laughs> they're not going to have home field advantage. They may have it in a wild card game. But if you look at it, on the road, they've been beat by double digits by the Jaguars. They've been blown out by the Titans. Um, This is a team that I think desperately needs to be at home in the playoffs. This is not your typical Patriots team, Anthony. No, it's not. And I I think there's a lot of factors. And and I was thinking about this with Tom Brady. I was watching the game and I heard one of the broadcasters say something about his decision making. And it made me think, while Brady's body, that might not be failing him, but some of his decision making this season has been terrible. 
Maybe yeah. his mind and decision making, maybe he's getting a little bit slower. Well, I think this also, though, I think as you get older, and I compare this to a boxer, where they'll be 40 years old, they'll come out of the ring they just lost, and they'll ask him what happened. And they'll be like, well, I knew what to do, but as soon as I saw it, I couldn't respond to it. So it, it makes him a little bit late on everything. And really, Steve, I think the Patriots are in trouble. And this is the first time I've thought this since, like, 2001. Yeah, and I'll just comment. You know, it's kind of like doing a show with you every day, Mike. You kind of get run down of doing the monotonous same thing over and over again. And and for the Patriots, I think it's wishful thinking on both your guys' parts. I think this is still a solid football organization. I think come playoff time, it doesn't really matter where they play. I don't think anybody can execute in the crunch as well or efficiently as Belichick can coaching-wise and Brady can on the field. I still think they're the team to beat. I do. I agree with you entirely. They're not as strong as, as past Bronco or uh, Patriots teams, no doubt about that. But I still wouldn't bet against this football team right now to, to make another run in the playoffs. So, I mean, I, I, I agree they may not be. But I wouldn't bet against them. I mean, I'm I'm just going to sit out there and say they are the most dangerous team in the AFC right now as far as I'm concerned because they're not the favorites right now. Kansas City obviously is the favorite. Uh, San Diego looks strong, and, and, the, and the Patriots are just working back there. But you know Mike as well as I do. you said it a million times. They've got the best coach in the NFL, probably in the history of the NFL, and they've got the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL most likely, and don't ever discount those two guys working together in crunch situations. The thing I discount is the wherever they play, Steve. It takes more than those two yeah. to win a Super Bowl, and our, I don't. Our, I don't think the offensive line. Well, they've is got good. They, they've got that all purpose. Well, the they've got that all purpose player in county good. too. They yeah. can do everything. Yeah, who also can Except get tackle, hurt and be out for the season. The end zone. Who, who also was looking to retire last year, and he gets hurt a Grunt lot. Grunt doesn't look like himself. No. He doesn't look anywhere near the grunk that was there before. Yeah, and without no, I, him, you've got a couple decent receivers. you got banged up running backs. I mean, I, I think this team has problems. And when you look at their schedule, they could lose to Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Before you know it, they're looking at maybe being a four seed. And I hate to tell you this, but the four seed in the playoffs is going to have to host either Kansas City or the Chargers. And I don't think they would come out of that game alive. Oh, my God. Kansas City has historically fails every time they get in the playoffs. I doubt that Kansas City gets past – well, they may get to the second game, depending on who they play. They play If they play, end up playing New England, no way. You know, Kansas City show a lot of flaws, too. I mean, they're, they're not winning like they were winning. Yeah, the they have a lot of flaws. Mahomes, and and Mahomes is making a lot of mistakes good. all of a sudden, too. But so, I, I, I'm not fine. sure you know, on you guys, you, guys sound, you guys sound like a couple of – Idiot sportscasters right now. Yeah. Betting against well, the You Patriots. sound like some arrogant guy that never played above high school football. So, I mean, hell, it goes well, either that's way. Fine. And I'm just telling that's you fine. this. You win with speed, and I don't think New England has it right now. And I don't think they've got the guys on the back end that can cover receivers. Now, Kansas City, I agree. I would like it against Kansas City, but against the Chargers, I think with the Chargers' defensive front, and the Chargers' ability to not have to blitz Brady to beat him, I think the Chargers are the team to beat here. I think the Chargers are the team to beat if they don't go to Kansas City and win, but I think they go to Kansas City Thursday night and win. And I think they win the division. But that's just my opinion. And as we saw, my opinion means nothing to Risley because he's so above and beyond us because he played college basketball. All right, next up, let's look. At the Chicago Bears with a 15-6 to win over the L.A. Rams last night. Um, Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah, you want right. me to send you another picture of my national championship ring? Why? I mean, it's just my son's making well, fun I, of you know, it because I mean, it's Cracker Jack box. Championships are all no the same diamonds. way, Mike. They're, they're all no on diamonds. the same way. The part of what no sport you're in. Champs, yeah. There's a formula for winning national championships or World Is Super there? Bowls or whatever. Is there's there? a formula, yeah. So what's the formula? Uh, it's you know we talked about it many many times. So what's having the great point coaches now? and great players, players yeah. that step up all the time and do do things right all the time. Yeah, it's about having Bob Knight and Isaiah Thomas, or having Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. 
But you know what? Bob Kn- guys can Isaiah lead Thomas can, can, can execute plays that need to be executed. Bob Knight I'm just telling you. And Isaiah, did, wait a second. Isaiah Thomas right couldn't execute a play by himself. He needed, you know, Ted Kitchell, Randy Whitman, Ray Tolbert, Landon. Did you not Turner. watch the first five minutes of the second half of the 81 National Championship game? Yeah, but overall, he as a whole, North Carolina single Yeah, okay. So we now you're getting in. We so thinking. now you're getting into why I think you're full of shit, and you walked right into it. In basketball, one person can control the game. In football, it can't. Tom Brady doesn't play defense. Yeah, well. Tom Brady doesn't run the ball. Tom Brady runs the offense. Yeah, which and you'll be the first to admit well. the quarterback is the most important position of any NFL football team in, in period. No, I don't think so, but I think center okay. is. All right, I think the center. Move is. on to the next game. The Move center. on to the next game. The center is can't get the ball at the center. Go ahead. Move on. Move Chicago. On. Move on. Let's go. Chicago beat the Rams. So does this show us that the Rams have issues, Anthony? And does it show us that Chicago is a legit contender? You know, I think it does show us a little bit that the Rams have issues because this is two years in a row now. We've seen this Rams offense. They they struggle a little bit in December, and a lot of it has to do with, A, not getting Todd Gurley the ball enough because in a game like that, on the road, in the cold, Todd Gurley should be touching the ball as much as Ezekiel Elliott. And then on the other side with Jared Goff, Jared Goff, he can't throw the ball in the cold. So what's... What's the use of all these these weapons if your quarterback can't perform in cold weather? And then another issue that I'm starting to see that I think that uh, Al Michaels pointed it out last night is that the Rams have no depth. So this is a team that I'm worried about uh, moving forward a little bit. All right, Steve, same question. Same answer. I mean, I, you know, Goss still learning to be a quarterback in the NFL. He did not have a good game. I think that they didn't utilize their talent right, like Anthony said. I think it's a great assessment. I think that it just shows that that they're not as strong as people thought they were. You know, New Orleans did not look great in the, in, in the first half against Tampa Bay. Um, there's a lot of parity in the NFL, a lot of guys that can step up and play. And I, I don't think – I think the Rams are as vulnerable as any team, so are the Saints as vulnerable as any team. It's who, who brings it on that given day? But Anthony's exactly right. I mean, they're not utilizing their talent well. I don't think they're very deep. Uh, Mike, you and I both called the game in our uh, in our Friday show. We both picked Chicago to win, didn't we? Yes. So it was no surprise to us that the Bears are, you know, like I said, I'm not going to get here and get, I said this before on another show, I'm not going to give this cliche of defense wins championships, but I'm going to tell you, you don't win championships if you don't have defense. All right, and if that's, you have to understand that defenses don't necessarily win championships, but if you don't have defense, you probably are going to win a championship. Well, the Rams' and defense I think the Bears actually played defense really well team. last night. Yeah, but yeah, the Bears but where... played a little bit better. Check the Rams because the Rams are aren't the Rams considered to be one of the best offensive teams in the NFL? They're supposed to be the best offensive team in the NFL. Yeah, well, they didn't not. show it last night against a great defense. You, you want to know? You know, it, it's kind of like the Bears are maybe a little bit more of a no-name defense. I get it. You know, I didn't even hear Khalil Mack's name mentioned. Uh, was he even playing in the game? Well, Khalil yeah. Mack, here's where I was going. Khalil Mack, in the second half, he did cause a fumble, uh, a Jared got, got fumble. But on the other side, where the hell was Aaron Donald? Aaron Donald was invisible. Yeah. I think he had one and a half tackles last night. And, you know, if you want to go off and, and have these big sack totals against lesser teams, that's oh, fine. But on. when you're in a big game like this, Jesus. you got to show up. But you do realize I mean, camp, 10 Anthony. of his sacks. I mean, you can't. 10 of his sacks out of his 16 have been against the best teams they've played. This is all Four about sacks coaching. Against the 49ers. You know what? This whole game is about a couple things. Number one, McVay's not a very good coach. Number two, Nagy is. And last night, this whole game was about the coaching staff. If you watch the Bears, they did something to the Rams nobody had ever done. You know, they threw nine guys in the box, and they would run one out sometime to cover, sometimes three. Basically, what they did is they were giving Jared Goff looks so that he would audible to throwing the ball. Because when he counts a certain amount in a box, he's not giving the ball to Gurley. And when he gave the ball to Gurley, there were so many people in the box, Gurley couldn't go anywhere. 
Um, on offense with the Bears, the Bears were running two, sometimes three guys at Donald. So I, I, to say anything about Larry Donald here is freaking crazy when you got a guy like Adamican Sue who's making a ton of money and the other defensive linemen. I mean, they got defensive linemen all over the place that are getting paid out the ass. That's yeah, why. But, there are some sports guys out there who are saying Aaron Donald should be the league MVP. He should oh, be yeah. in the conversation with the quarterback. He should be. But he has to show up in these he games. He should be. He did show up. He took on three guys. Dindamakin Sue did not make a play. I mean, he made six tackles, and that's it. They're triple teaming and double teaming this guy. The other problem you got is this. The linebackers are not that good. Um, I hate to tell you this, but Dante Fowler, the reason the Falcons let him go is because he's not that great of a player. And they've sunk all their money into this all-star team. They have no depth, Absolutely. which makes your special Absolutely. teams not as good. They have no depth, so if you get injuries, you're screwed. And, and I'm sorry, but when I look at this team, I know McVay is the darling of everybody. He's 33 years old, 34 years old. I mean, when I look at this... They got completely outcoached last night. You know, Aaron Donald's getting triple teamed. I, mean, I bet he got triple teamed a third at a time. The rest of the time he got double teamed. So why are you paying Indomitian Sue so much money? Because if you're double a triple team in Aaron Donald, you're going to take Aaron Donald away. So somebody else has got to make a play. And what I saw last night is this. Jared Goff got confused by the defense. They ran a lot of show coverage against him. And he had no answer. This had nothing to do with cold weather. This had to do with the fact that Jared Goff is not great at reading a defense, especially at the NFL caliber of defense. And it also showed me with the Bears that I think the Bears, even though I think Nagy completely outcoached him last night, I think what the Bears need to do is change the style of offense he wants to run. Because you've got some big play receivers here. Trubisky can throw the ball deep. He can run. But you've got Jordan Howard, and it seems to me like they really don't want to use Howard the way they should. I mean, to me, I'm going to run an eye formation. I'm going to pound the ball between the tackles. I'm going to play action, throw deep, let Trubisky run a little bit. But instead, he wants to run the offense that he ran in Kansas City. And I think in the end, that's going to bite the Bears in the ass. I, I think this is completely open for the Saints, and it's for the same reason I said it before. The Saints are vulnerable. Every team's vulnerable. But when you have Drew Brees as opposed to Jared Goff and Mitch Trubisky, you're a hell of a lot less vulnerable. Anybody? It's profound, Mike. It's an absolutely profound statement. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it's true. And when I look at it, you look yeah, at the no, Rams, I, yeah. the Bears, the Cowboys. We're going to talk about Dak Prescott. And we've talked about Dak Prescott doesn't throw guys open. Same thing can be said about these guys. And when it comes down to it in a playoff situation, I'm taking the Hall of Fame quarterback that I know can get it done over these other guys. Because that's why also I wouldn't be surprised, according to how this plays out, if Seattle's in the NFC Championship game going to New Orleans. Because they then got you just kind of refute your whole. Then you kind of just refute the whole deal I said about Belichick and Brady. You want to take a Hall of Fame quarterback over everybody else? That's what, what, isn't that what I just said about the, defending the Patriots? This is the thing, no. Same statement, the, Mike. The, the no, exact same because thing. the thing you're you missing is this. Take, you take the thing you're missing, oh, Jesus, here we go. Those are your guys oh. that are most likely going to get there. Do you understand that the Saints have two stud running yeah. backs and a really good defensive line and the best offensive line in football? Tom Brady does not have any of that. That's what I'm saying. When it gets down to it. And, and, the, and, and the Saints don't have Tom Brady. So it balances out. Uh, I would take Drew Brees over Tom Brady. I got Brady. Drew Brees. I'll Drew take, Brees I'll no take Drew Brees. Brees. Whatever. Okay, sure of course not. you would. Of course you would. Well, so okay, you would. right now, if you're telling me That's you can watch. Shit, wait dude. a second. What's Good a crock of shit is this? What's a crock of shit? You would take Drew Brees over Tom Brady. Right now? Uh, I'd take Russell Wilson over Tom Brady. Tom Brady's not Tom Brady anymore. I think that's obvious. I think that it started to show last year. I think it's shown this year. M mentally, I don't think, and I think Anthony nailed that. Mentally, he's not what he was. And I hate to tell you this, everybody gets old. Father Time beats everybody, whether it's Joe Montana, yeah, no, Muhammad I Ali. Father, Father Time wins, and Father Time is winning against Tom Brady right now. 
Am I that far off there, Anthony? No, not at all. I mean, because I really, I, I think that it's father time's catching up to him. Tom Brady is still a great quarterback. He's still one of the top five or six guys in the league. But really, right now, you give me Drew Brees or Tom Brady, I want Drew Brees. I just think he's better right now. All right. That doesn't mean all I, I time. I think it's close between the two of them. And yeah. that's, that's a real close I, call. I, and I think when you get in the playoffs, the game changes, Mike. The game changes big time. I know. When you start I'll, playing I, one I, and done football. I take None Andrew of these guys Luck are playing one and done football right now. I'll take Andrew Luck so, over both of them right now. I would take Russell Wilson over all three of those. But that's just because I still think the Seahawks are rolling with a lot less talent than anybody else that's in this conversation, including the Colts. Um, next up, we've got to talk about the Carolina <laughs> Panthers because I love to talk about Cam Newton and when he fails. This team at one point yeah, I think he, was six and two, and now they're six and seven. Can you text Lucas and make sure he's listening right now? <laughs> he's not listening. I know he's on Facebook. Of this. Um, he's on he, Facebook. I know he's on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully Lucas is listening. But t- Baker Mayfield completely as a rookie outplayed Cam Newton. He was 18 for 22, 238 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Cam Newton, as always, Cam Newton's stats don't look that bad. 26 for 42, 265 until you get to the zero touchdowns and the one interception. And the fact that Cam Newton, with a chance to put his team firmly in playoff contention, got beat by a rookie quarterback and the Cleveland Browns, Anthony. Yeah, uh, Cam Newton didn't have his best game in the world. You know, he had another turnover. The Panthers' defense didn't help either. But, you know, during this Panthers' collapse in the second half, and just like over with the Atlanta Falcons and and their losing streak in the second half, both quarterbacks are turning the ball over a lot. And I'm putting, uh, yesterday, I'm putting a lot of it on Cam Newton. All right, Steve? I, you know how I feel about Cam Newton. I, I told you he plays for style and not for substance. Well, he's a front runner. Um, he's a front runner. Yeah, he, he he wants to look good. He wants to look pretty, and he makes individual plays. And every play I think he makes, he makes. Well, how's this going to look for me? And not how's this going to affect my team? And I don't think he's a good leader. I don't think he's a great quarterback, and he's a great athlete. Um, but it doesn't surprise me. We've talked about this all season long. Uh, the Panthers are a front-running team. When things are going their way, they play well. When things get hard, and I think Cleveland is an up-and-coming team. And in a couple of years, I think you've stated this too. We'll probably be winning that division oh, um, they, in a couple of years. I think they could next year. Yeah, you, you know, you may be right. I mean, and I don't want to get that argument with you because I don't want to fight you on that one. Well, it's according to who the head coach um, but, is, so I'm not sold on it yet. Either. Yeah. Yeah, but within the next few years, with the development of Baker Mayfield, now he's turning out to be. The finally, the one good quarterback draft they've made. But, yeah, I, I have no use for Cam Newton or no use for the Carolina Panthers. All right. Should have taken a snow day. <laughs> next up, we get the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes beat the Baltimore Ravens 27-24 to in overtime, one of the best games of the day. Mahomes was 23, or 35 for 53, 377 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, including completing a no-look pass. Tyreek Hill. 8 for 139. Travis Kelsey, 7 for 77. Um, do you think the Kansas City Chiefs have to be the favorite in the AFC right now, Anthony? I'd say yes because of their remaining schedule, but I'm seeing reports that Tyreek Hill uh, injured his foot pretty badly. So now if you don't have Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, and Kareem Hunt, this offense looks completely different. They just signed Kelvin Benjamin who really hasn't done anything in two years, he's probably going to be a significant player for them uh, in the next three games. So I'm a little bit worried about the Chiefs. But on the other side, they are getting Eric Berry back on Thursday. They're expected to get their all-pro safety back. So I think he'll balance out by lifting up the defense. He'll balance out the offensive losses. All right, Steve, I already know that you don't think the Chiefs are. And when I look at the Chiefs... Well, no, no. I, I don't say... I mean, everybody wants to well, root for the Chiefs. You can't call them favorites. That's what you story said. He, He's had a... You know, no, I'm just saying I'm going by history. I'm just saying the greatest predictor of the future is the past. And historically, the Chiefs don't fare well in the playoffs. I mean, I think right now they're they're the best team in the AFC right now, but that's not going to matter in three weeks because the game changes. 
you and can make I, the- historically they they falter. I mean, and you're right, they're losing running backs. They're depleted offensively. They're not as strong as they were. Um, Mahomes is is you know is magical. It's like throwing a no look pass, we all saw that. And but you know that's all stick that that can backfire you on you as easily yeah. as it looks it, pretty. It, when it you reminds see it on me TV. of Brett Favre. And as we yeah, know, exactly. Usually, Easter famine. Usually, in a big situation, Brett Favre was way more famine than he was feast. Right. Yeah. I, it, it's just, that's kind of it's sadly. I mean, Andy Reid's a great coach. He's he's a guy we all like. He's a workman's coach. Uh, you know, blue collar coach, and what a great match of the year for Patrick. And you know, the cream up thing is sad that it happened. Um, and but they're just there's more crap coming out about them all of a sudden than there is great stuff coming out about them and you know that's going to eat away in your locker room at some point in the future too i mean they're not winning games like they're winning early in the season i just don't see them as being a real threat in the playoffs yeah uh, and that's just based on history not on what they're doing right now it's just based on the history of the kansas city chiefs in the playoffs does that history from 1997 or 1986 matter I don't know. I mean, you you don't want it to, but it it's just to bad itself, vibes. It's, it? ba- yeah. it's bad vibes. It's bad vibes. Good, great way to put it. Bad Dude, vibes. I understand this bad completely. Karma. I'm a Bengals fan. <clears throat> so yeah, you, you would like to say that it yeah. was different, but the other it's thing kind is of how still when the Colts rolling. play the Patriots, the same thing when the Colts play the Patriots. We know we're screwed. Yeah, you can't beat the Patriots. The Patriots. We're far better than the Colts. That had nothing right. to do with yeah. anything Yeah, we that. just knew it. We never would agree. But see, the Colts in the playoffs. If the Patriots were in the Colts' pathway, we yeah. were screwed. Yeah, and it didn't matter. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about even the, if, the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Yeah, even in if the, the playoff Patriots, pathway, they're kind of screwed. Even if the Patriots weren't in the Colts' way, the Chargers would have been, and you guys couldn't beat them either. Not even when yeah, they were another team. Yeah, those are those um, just two teams we could not beat in the playoffs. The Colts could not beat in the playoffs. So, yeah, so I feel that way about Kansas City. I just It's bad vibes, like Anthony said it eloquently. So, yeah, I just don't feel good about them. Now, what about the Ravens? We look at the Ravens. They've still got, I think, at least a 50-50 shot of winning this division. But I don't see this team being able to do anything with Lamar Jackson, a quarterback. I'm sorry. Yesterday, 147 yards, two touchdowns. He runs around pretty good. But my concern is when they got the ball and they were driving to win the game, to get it on their own 20, they're still throwing a five-yard out. And then he throws an interception. And I, I, I just don't think this kid can throw the ball good enough for Baltimore to be a viable Super Bowl contender, Anthony. Yeah, Lamar Jackson looked a little bit better yesterday. And then that last drive when Lamar Jackson got knocked out and, and there was, you know, RG3, that game was pretty much over there. But I think the, the Ravens can come out of this game feeling pretty good since they didn't get blown out by the Chiefs. And they really went down to the wire with, you know, what some people are saying is the best team in the AFC. So it's it's not a loss. They didn't get blown out. I you know, think that this game could be different in the playoffs if, if it's played again. I thought that they had – I had more hope once RG3 came in because at least he can throw the ball. You know, I mean, I, I just – Lamar Jackson doesn't do it for me, Steve. You know, no, I, I, I would like to have seen RG3 come in earlier in the game, actually, and, and get a chance to warm up and not have to be forced to make desperation passes, basically, to try and, you know, march the team down the field in crunch time. Um, yeah, right now, you guys are all talking about how they're going to do the playoffs. I think right now that the Ravens are in a dogfight to make the playoffs right now because Obviously. there's some other teams that are playing good football, too. Um, you know, the Dolphins want a big game. Colts no. want a big game. No. Um you know, and I don't think the, I don't think the Dolphins are really in the mix, but the Colts certainly are. They're wait a second. Dallas, How, wait a second. A How are the Colts in the mix at seven and six, but the Dolphins aren't? Well, I just don't think the Dolphins are as good as the Colts. They have a quarterback. I don't think they don't have Andrew Luck. Yeah. I just think Andrew Luck and, right and now it was it was a one sided beatdown when the Dolphins went to Indianapolis and played the Colts also if I remember right yeah, correct I know yeah I know yeah mm-hmm. no you're, you're right you're right I shouldn't say that that's fine they're all in the mix the Titans the Titans played great yesterday and all of a sudden now they're you know they're seven and six too there's a lot of seven and six teams that are capable 
of knocking the Ravens out of there real quick. So I'm not going to even talk about the Ravens in the playoffs yet until they make the playoffs because nobody was. They're scratching and clawing to get in we, the playoffs. The comment was, I don't know if they can make it there because of that. I think the Dolphins go to Minnesota okay. next right. week. That will put them in. They'll put them at seven and seven. But then again, the Colts host the Cowboys. They can Colts be seven and seven. Great seven Dallas seven. team, right? And I yeah, hate to bring right. this up, but at five Colts. and eight, five and eight, the Cincinnati Bengals with a three-game winning streak can win the AFC North. <laughs> fire Hugh Jackson uh, today, and you got it done, probably. I don't know why Hugh Jackson being fired would make that big a difference because they need to get rid of Marvin Lewis. But all right, well, so Hugh Jackson's just bad karma. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. 29-23, overtime win over the Dallas Cowboys. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, Cowboys, 29-23 win over the Eagles. Now, does it bother you, the calls that your team got to be able to win the game, Anthony? I mean, there were calls on both sides. No, wait, but, Anthony, yeah, Anthony, it's, it's, Anthony. No, no, no. The opening no, Anthony, kickoff. Don't even go there. The opening Just kickoff of the game. Hold on. The yeah. opening kickoff of the game. The Cowboys clearly fumble. The Eagles clearly recovered but the Cowboys got to keep the ball. My point is this. The Dallas Cowboys are a team that are really good when people expect them to suck. This game was huge for them. If the Eagles recover that and go down and score, I think this changes the entire game. And I, I saw some and questionable you're, you're calls both ways. you're talking about that ways. opening kickoff? Yeah. For the first few quarters, the Eagles' offense couldn't get anything going. I know. So don't so you think? No wait a second. That was gonna, that's that my was be freaking score. point. They're go down the field to score. Oh, they got the ball in the twenty-yard line. They're probably going to score. The question is, is it a touchdown or a field goal? The other thing is this: if you don't think it changes a team mentally to turn the ball over on the twenty to first play of the game, and then maybe your defense isn't doing a great job stopping them, I think you're nuts. And number three, if this would have been the other way around. Cowboy fans would be raising all kind of hell. Uh, if what was the other way around the calls? Yeah, I mean to, that one uh, Randy Gregory hit in the second half. That shouldn't have been called, and, and the same thing with the Zeke penalty. Him lowering his helmet down to to in, initiate contact. Give me a break. There were calls going. Both Did he lower ways his head? Did he lower his head? He did, but how often is that called? It should be called. This but is, it should football. always be called. It's football. We've had this but conversation, it Anthony. Called. With it, that it's that's football. not football. We, it's we not football. We question why that call is not being made more often. I see more running backs, Lori, hitting yeah. with their – leading it's with their helmets than I do anybody called. else on the field. Yeah, it's about time it got called. I see more running backs leading with their helmets than anybody on the field. And I, I they think They lower this. their head every time they go I into don't the know line. why any fan of any team would think that's all right. Because basically, you're putting that dude in danger because you're letting him hit with his head. But once again, right. no, nothing there changes the game. I think the game has changed completely on that first kickoff. I mean, there's a huge difference there. And also, I hate to tell you this, but even if they get a field goal and the game plays out the exact same way, that it doesn't go to overtime, the Eagles win. The other one was the push off on Dallas Goddard. Do you think that was a good call? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because number one, you're allowed to make contact once within five yards, and that was at five yards where it happened. But uh, so, so we're gonna we're going to take all the credit out of the Cowboys. And, I'm not going to take any credit rest. away for the Cowboys. But we're just gonna. It, it was it was 16 on, on 11 with the with the five officials. That was it. No, nobody Amari took any credit away from them. Uh, number one. I don't think an officials ever cost a team a game. Number two. Because the Eagles got I, momentum back in the second half. Dude, Eagles, all I know is this. They would have had momentum from the start of the game with that fumble recovery. But what I do know is this. The house fighter always gets the decision. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, as you said, they're America's team. It was fabricated by NFL Films, Monday Night Football, and all of them for a reason. They need the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs a lot more than they need the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's just the way it is. But the Eagles had every opportunity to win the game. They didn't. Doesn't matter what happened with the officials. The Cowboys won the game. And in the end, they deserved to win the game. And when I look at it, defensively, the Cowboys are good. They can run the ball. But in the end, 
They can't win because they got Dak Prescott. I've never seen a man miss so many wide open wide receivers 50 yard downfield. You know, as poorly as Dak Prescott played, he still completed 77.8% of his passes. He threw 42 of 54, which were career highs, 455 yards, career high, three touchdown. Now, the issue is the two interceptions and the fumble. Uh, he also fumbled last week. He turned the ball over four times in the past two games, but in the three games previous to this, he didn't turn the ball over. Dak Prescott is is slowly starting to gel with the offense a little bit. <laughs> so wait a it, second. It's starting the to happen. Eagles, the Eagles are a terrible defense right now. They've got no DBs. Okay, okay. last week completed 85% of his passes. The week before that, 71. So tell me how many passes he threw somebody open. Tell me how many passes he completed where he didn't have to wait for somebody to come open before he threw it to but, him. But that's Dak Prescott. As I know, a and that's why you can't win. Quarterbacks. That's why they went out and got Amare Cooper. And that's why you can can't play. win. That's he why can you can't get win. open and make plays. Dude, you cannot win a Super Bowl with a quarterback that plays that way. We'll get to see in a, in a couple of weeks. No, we'll get we to won't see. get to see. We already know. I mean, the Cowboys cannot win a Super Bowl. Because, number one, they don't have the coaching to do it. And, number two, Dak Prescott cannot throw anybody open. That's a huge problem, especially when you play a team like the Chicago Bears or you play a team like the Rams that could get after the quarterback. Because, I'm sorry, the Cowboys don't have a great offensive line either. What about the – yeah, it won't work against the Saints either. It won't. In a playoff situation – it's not going to work against the Saints. And you can sit there and say, well, they beat the Saints. You know what? Yesterday, I watched the Raiders beat the Steelers. Does that mean the Raiders are better than the Steelers? No. The, the Houston Texans, all these teams are on a five, eight, ten game winning streaks. Cowboys are on what, a five, six game winning streak. And they have gotten zero credit. Really? They've gotten zero credit? They've gotten because zero. Outside. Zero. Wait a second. They've gotten zero credit because in the five-game winning streak, they've beaten exactly one team with a winning record. A win's a win. Yeah. And that where, team where do they not get? You know why they don't get, get credit? They don't get credit because Cowboy it's, fans are always the same. Hell, they won the Super Bowl when they beat the Saints. They came out against the Philadelphia Eagle team yesterday. They couldn't get out of their own way and almost lost the game to them. But they still won. Yeah. The good teams find a way to win those games, and you know that. <laughs> the good teams find a way to win. That that That's the adage in the NFL for so many years. Yeah. In the past, the Cowboys would have lost that game. In the past, they would have lost. They would have found a way to lose. Not really, because I remember the year they went 13-3 and three and waited until they played the Giants in the playoffs to lose. Um, uh, that, that was heartbreaking. I thought it was awesome. Uh, but... <laughs> Oh, that was a heartbreaking year for me. Uh, well, you know, this is the thing. You still don't have the quarterback to get this done. And you don't have the defense to get this done yet. I think your linebackers are great. I think your defensive line is good. But I, I, I will bet you anything, if they go to New Orleans to play the Saints, they're going to give up more than 30 points. And I don't think with Dak Prescott, that they're going to be able to score more than 30 points to win the game. Steve? Um, Yeah, I mean, I I, I think the Cowboys are a very dangerous football team right now. I think that they, when they're on, they're a front-running team. When they're on, they're on. Dak Prescott is not consistently, but I think Amari Cooper, I keep going back to Amari Cooper. What a great move. It was hey, and, and it was a terrible to throw to Cooper that won the game yesterday because he can't throw yeah, anybody was, open. But, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like what Anthony said. You know, champions find a way; they find a way to make those plays. I mean, I, I agree. It was it was a fluke play, and I mean, nine times out of ten, that thing's batted down and not batted up into the air into his into his hands. But it did; it happened. So you gotta you gotta look at. You know, I'm scared to death about playing Dallas now for Indianapolis because I think it. It's, it's, it's do or die for Indianapolis. It, and right now, Dallas is a very hot football team. You know, they put up big numbers, big stats. They won an important game. They continue to win important games. How they win them, I, don't, I can't disagree with you, Mike, because it doesn't seem they should win them. But Dad Gummit, they're finding ways to win them, and that's a scary team. It's just a very scary football team to have All to right. go play. You don't really know how to prepare for them. 
I'll tell you this. I, you I think you, the Colts. You don't know. When Dax Prescott puts up the numbers he put up, I didn't realize he put up those kind of numbers. And that's a career day for any NFL quarterback. Okay, once again. 454 any, yards. And I'll tell you this. 99% of the quarterbacks in the NFL could have that day against the Eagles because they have been. The mm-hmm. Eagles' secondary is decimated. And I'm telling you this right now. I think the Colts are going to beat the Cowboys at home. And I think the Colts are going to beat the Cowboys handily at home. No. Well, I hope you're right. I mean, but as a per- for me personally, because I'm, a, you know, obviously I'm a well, diehard Colts for, fan. But yeah, you know, I'm actually cheering for the Cowboys in this game because I hate the Colts. Their fans are all idiots. But go yep. ahead. In the past oh, three games, Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper, 26 yeah. of 30 targets for 473 yards and five touchdowns. In the past three I don't, games, Anthony, I don't know that you shouldn't throw Amari Cooper's name in the hunt for MVP. <laughs> I mean, you talk about a guy who's changed the football team by coming to him. I mean, he changed the whole face of the Cowboys. You can make a case picked him up. that Amare Cooper made the difference yeah. in the NFC East because the Eagles, yeah. they off second round pick, and they wouldn't pay the first that Dallas did. If Amari Cooper was in Philly, this is a different situation. Yeah, but because we, the Eagles Mike, didn't, can't, the, can't, the Eagles didn't in, in the long pick. run, the Eagles may have been smart not to. We don't know what they're yeah, going to well, draft with that first round pick next year, because I've seen that before. And it's going to be a high pick. It's going to be a high pick. I know. There's so, something going on with the Cowboys right now. That's just, it's just karma. Cowboys have karma right now. Things are happening. Yeah, in their the Cowboys favor. always Calls have going karma. Their way. They always have karma well, until they don't. Then, and that's dangerous football team. Well, see, that's this is the thing that blows my mind, Steve. Karma. Hold on. You wrote off the Kansas City Chiefs because of history. But you don't do the same thing to yeah, the Dallas bad Cowboys. Karma. What about the Cowboys? I think the Chiefs have bad karma. I think the Cowboys, the Cowboys have good don't. Karma right now. No, right now they've got great karma. Everything, everything that screws up huh? goes their way. Screws up that in their makes favor. no sense. So the Chiefs yesterday didn't have good karma. Because I, I thought when you were I talking about I, karma, you were saying you were looking at the past 10, 20 years and saying the Chiefs because they lose in the playoffs, have bad karma. But that wasn't what you meant then. You just mean that this year the Chiefs don't have good karma. No, I didn't say that. I just think I think right now, I think overall in general, the Chiefs have bad karma in the Why? playoffs. Right now the Cowboys have hot karma going right now. So, the, so wait a second. This makes no sense. Of karma. Because I'm pretty I sure know. in the last 20 years, the Chiefs have won more playoff games than the Cowboys. Well, Mike, I've been with you long enough to know you're a spin doctor. You can spin anything the way you I'm want. I'm not spinning spin anything. You like the the fact is this. You, are, so. you said the Chiefs. Go ahead. You said the Chiefs had bad karma when it comes to the playoffs. How can you not yeah. think that about the Cowboys? I'm just telling you that the instant karma they're having right now supersedes the overall bad karma. Well, then why wouldn't the Chiefs? Because the Chiefs are 11-2. They're because not the Chiefs are winning by three points now when they used to be winning by 40 points. They're not winning like they used to win. They're they're barely winning. So the Cowboys won and, easy yesterday, and they blew out the Saints. I mean, come on, they've won a, no, they've won close games also. It's an hour show. Move on. That's as long as the show goes. Okay. Next yeah. up, we will go to the New York Giants and the Washington <laughs> Redskins, forty to sixteen. The reason I bring it up is this. Saquon Barkley, 14 carries for 170 yards. I'm just going to leave that there. And I still think he's the best running back in football. Anthony? Yeah, and, you know, last week, with the way Philip Lindsay was saying, I had a take saying that if the Broncos advance to the playoffs, Philip Lindsay should be in the conversation for Offensive Rookie of the Year. But, you know, Lindsay didn't play all too well yesterday, and Saquon Barkley continues to dominate uh, the league right now in his rookie year. So, yeah, I don't think it's a question. Saquon Barkley uh, is the best, uh, the best in football. I don't know if I'm going to say he's the best running back in football. He's the best rookie right now. But it's hard oh. to say Ezekiel Elliott isn't the best running back in the NFL right now. Oh, it's real easy to say he's not because Barkley is the best running back I've seen coming into this league since Terrell Davis. Um, and the other thing oh, is this. What about Adrian Peterson? What about him? I'll take Saquon Barkley anytime. time. Um, my other comment is this. I don't think Saquon Barkley's the best rookie in the NFL, but I think he's the best running back in the NFL. 
I'll still take Quentin Nelson with the Colts at guard over anything I've seen in the last decade for rookies. Um, next up, the New Orleans Saints beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 28-14. to Is there any cause for concern here, Steve, since they didn't really get started? They were down 14-3 to in the middle of the third quarter. No, I think there's cost for optimism that you know they can get that kind of a slow start and rebound back and win those games like that. That just shows the character of Drew Brees and you know Sean Payton uh, again, another great coaching quarterback combination and duo, which makes them a favorite and a threat. So I, I don't see any problem with the Saints. I and mean, Saints find ways to win. You, you can't keep the Saints down for an entire sixty minutes of football. You know Drew Brees is just too good of a quarterback. And he'll eventually click it in, get it into gear. He'll 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 dial everybody in, and he makes more big plays than any other quarterback in the NFL right now. More well, critical big plays. And I, I think this was a good win, Anthony, just because they did get shut down for four quarters against the Cowboys, and they really got shut down for three quarters against the Bucks. And I, I think it would have been a huge blow to their confidence if they don't throw up that seventeen to nothing in the fourth quarter and win this game. Anthony? No, I lost you there for a second. Oh, I, I said I think this was a huge win for the Saints because I think they did get shut down for four quarters against the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. They got shut down for three quarters by the Bucks, And if they would have lost this game, I think it would have been a huge <laughs> blow to their confidence. Yeah, I agree. And, and on the Saints offense, you know, if you take away Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, and – Really, those two targets, they're really, you know, they need help. There's not a lot of uh, of quality players outside of their studs. You know, you talk about the Rams, they have, you know, two or three, even four quality pass catchers. You can't say the same thing about Drew Brees and the Saints. And if the good defenses start to figure, you know, you take uh, – limit Alvin Kamara's big plays and shut down Michael Thomas and keep the game in front of you, you can really give the Saints some issues on the offensive side of the ball. I think the Saints' defense have been bailing them out in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, and and I agree with you, but I do think this. The difference between Drew Brees and a lot of these guys is the fact that he can throw people open. He makes people better than what they are. Um, I still wouldn't bet against him, especially if they can get the two wins against the Panthers, end up being the number one seed. I think they're probably going to end up in the Super Bowl. But, yeah, I think that they are definitely they are definitely a flawed team, put it like that. But I, I think their strengths are so large that it may not matter at the end because, let's face it, the NFL, there's not a bunch of great teams. Um, next up, the Los Angeles Chargers continue to roll with a 26-21 to 21 win over the Cincinnati Bengals, Steve. Chargers-Chiefs Thursday night, I think, has to be the game of the week. No, it's the darling game, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's for all the marbles out there for the AFC West. Well, also, probably so, for the number yeah. one seed. Uh, is it? Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it would be, yeah. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it's going to be a fun game. I mean, it's a shootout. You got two great quarterbacks who are playing great football, and you know, I it's just gonna. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a fun football game to watch. There's not much you can comment on it. Just both both quarterbacks are capable of making mistakes in the game, but they're also capable of making great plays. And you know, another big shootout like we had with the, the Chiefs and the, and the Rams earlier in the year. So, um, just sit back, wait, and watch this one. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, and I think the key here for the Chargers, Anthony, is to get Melvin Gordon back and just to be able to rush the passer, Patrick Mahomes. I think the Chargers have a legit shot to beat the Chiefs. I would talk about the Bengals, but Marvin Lewis is still a freaking idiot. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, and, you know, when you were talking about, you know, the AFC and who's going to advance to the Super Bowl and through the playoffs and you're bringing up the Tom Brady element and you're bringing up, uh, Patrick Mahomes, I think Philip Rivers is flying completely under the radar. Number one, he's a veteran. If you take past history out of it, you know, Philip Rivers, he's 37 years old and is still playing. Be- I-, I think he's playing better than Tom Brady and Drew Brees right now. Uh, yesterday was the first game he failed to throw at least two touchdown passes this year. 
He's only thrown six interceptions and lost a fumble, so only to- uh, seven total turnovers. Uh, you know, Philip Rivers can make a lot of noise in the playoffs, and, and they're now they're winning games without Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler's a little banged up. So next man up at running backs, Justin Jackson, who's playing okay. I think the Chargers are going to make a lot of noise in the postseason. Yeah, as long as Gordon's healthy, I still think they're the team to beat in the AFC. I thought that at the start of the year. I still think that. I, I think they're the most complete team. I think they've got a very good defense. The Cincinnati Bengals had a chance to win this game, but yesterday they score a touchdown to make it 14-12 to 12 with like a minute left in the second quarter, and then they went for two and didn't get it. And the next thing you know, you know, they're down 21-13 to 13 and have to go for two to tie, or down 23-21, have to go for two to tie the game. So the game was definitely a Marvin Lewis loss again. But at least it looked like a lot of the Bengals tried yesterday. So I will give them that. So props to the Cincinnati Bengals for trying yesterday. Um, I was being sarcastic. Next up, we get the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lose 24-21 to to the Oakland Raiders. My favorite part of this game, Steve, and I know we were watching this game together at the same time, was the way John Gruden ran off like he'd won the Super Bowl and just vindicated his $10 million for this year. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that was the best part of the game. He ran around. He had, he had circled the entire stadium. I five everybody there. <laughs> so uh, it's got to be a load off his mind to get a win. You know, I mean, it's, it's a good win for the Raiders. Not that it's a significant win or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just a case where Roethlisberger has just got magic club. He's getting old, like, like Brady. He's more banged up than Brady's ever been, generally just through – the course of his career. And I just, you know, don't think the Steelers are really, uh, they're in jeopardy making the playoffs if the Ravens keep going strong. I would like to bring up the fact that I told you nobody in that division will win more than nine games. So I I think, I I think when you look at it, Pittsburgh's in trouble. They got no running game now, Anthony. Yeah. They don't look really good either. I am a little bit worried about them. Yeah. Well, they're poorly coached, so that happens. Um, let's see. Nobody cares about the Lions and Cardinals, do they? I think we covered every game that mattered. And tonight, we have a huge game in the NFC with playoff implications. We, we, the, we, we didn't talk about the Colts, the Heat, Texans. Snap oh, we the nine-game winning streak. We didn't? Oh, no, we didn't, didn't talk about that game. Didn't. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about it then. I really thought we did. I remembered somebody talking about Andrew Luck. That's what confused me. But yeah, Andrew, Luck. Andrew Luck, I mean, Anthony said he thinks he's the best quarterback oh, yeah, in the NFL right. right now, which, you know, we didn't talk about the game, though. I mean, it's a – it jumbled up the playoff situation quite a bit because it brought the Colts back into the fold. And now you've got a four or five teams that are sitting there at, at seven and six um, and some teams at six and seven. I mean, it's a big game for Seattle tonight. Um, you know, not anybody – I was trying to read all the scenarios and – you know, the Colts actually control a lot more of their own destiny than many of the other teams that are in that, at that 7-6 to six mark. Um, based on tiebreakers, playoffs, I just kind of read through it all just to see what if they really have a legitimate shot. The Colts have a legitimate shot. Um, I think Andrew Luck's playing great football right now. He's definitely back. He's got that. He, he should be an MVP candidate, although I still think it's going to go to Drew Brees. Um, but Anthony, what'd you think about the Ravens? Did they look vul- or the Ravens, the uh, Texans, they look vulnerable all of a sudden, or was it just the Colts' luck has dominated them? You know, I think the Texans have been so hot all season long, and some of their wins were ugly. Some of their wins, their offense uh, struggled, and a big part of the Texans' success has been uh, Lamar Miller on the ground. He's kind of blown up in the second half of the season, and the Colts' defense, they really held – uh, Lamar Miller in check, and when you make the Houston Texans one-dimensional, I think that uh, Deshaun Watson struggles. So I think a lot should go on the uh, a lot of accolades should go on the Colts uh, defense for this one as much as it, as it should be on Andrew Luck. Yeah, I, I agree there. And when I look at this, I mean, Houston had won nine games in a row. They were due to lose a game, but that doesn't take away from what the Colts did because the Colts went in there. And in the second half, or the second quarter, dominated the game. They basically put it away before halftime, Steve, because they just set the tone in that second quarter, outscored the Texans 17 to nothing. And I think from there, 
like you said, Deshaun Watson, I think, is going to be really good. A year or two from now, he might be able to overcome something like this, but not yet. Yeah, I was watching, you know, again, out here in the West Coast, you only get really see the Colts and, and that kind of games on red zone. And about halfway through the first hour in red zone, they were apologizing because the Colts and the Houston was the game was the only game they hadn't shown any highlights of yet. Cause they said nothing's happening there. They're just marching up and down the field. There's been like eight punts in the in the first quarter by both teams combined. So they started off kind of slow. So all of a sudden, but then in the second half, you start seeing a lot of, of the Colts and the, the Texas game going. So um, yeah, I, I think I think Colts have a very tough test next week. I think Dallas is just the hottest team in football right now. Um, like I said, they got great karma going, and it's going to be very difficult for the Colts to go in there and win a game. Luck's going to have to have a monster game. Well, you know they're and, you at know, home, right? Home's going to play well. Yeah, I know they're at home. Okay. Yeah, but still, Colts are not necessarily a, a big home. They're not a team that dominates at home anymore than they dominate on the road. Colts probably won as many road games as they do home games. They, they don't always, you know, how many times in New England come into Indianapolis and we get everybody's hands? How many times in San Diego? Coming in Indianapolis, we get our butts handed to us. There's no big home field advantage for the Colts playing in Indianapolis. It just doesn't work that way for the Colts. So, but it, it, it tightened everything up in the playoff race. It makes the loss to the Jacksonville all the more sad for the Colts because right now they'd be tied for first place and controlling their own destiny pretty much. But, you know, when you lose six to nothing with a high powered offense like the Colts have, you know. It, those things will bite you in the butt, which it's probably going to do to the Colts in the well, long run. Yeah, that's going to be the killer. That game's going to haunt them yep. forever. Um, that game's right. going to haunt them all season long, yeah. Tonight, Vikings Seahawks in Seattle. It's a huge game for playoff positioning. And still, the Vikings have an outside shot to win their division. The Seahawks are you know, pretty much smoked there. they got to win the wild. they got to get to the wild card. Um, Russell Wilson's played great. Uh, in this game, when I look at this, the difference in the game is Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins to me. I think that Seattle will be able to run the ball a little bit. I think Seattle wins this game, Anthony. Yeah, I think this is going to be a tough game for Kirk Cousins. We've seen him historically struggle on the road in his career. We've, And I seem to say this every week when we talk about Kirk Cousins in the big spot, but he seems to choke in the big spots. And nothing is bigger than uh, the game he's going into tonight in Seattle. Uh, Seattle's secondary, they've been atrocious in the past five games, so it's a, it's a really big opportunity for Cousins to, to bounce back and come out of it with a win, but I think the Seahawks, they're playing too well. They're at home, they have the 12th man on their side, and they have Russell Wilson, who I trust a hell of a lot more than Kirk Cousins right now. Yeah, and when you look at this game, I think it'll be decided by the team's quarterback who's more efficient. And Russell Wilson doesn't throw that many interceptions. And, of course, we can't say that for Kirk Cousins in situations like this, Steve. No. No, I think, I think this game is clearly in the hands of Seahawks. Um, you know, I, I don't see them losing this game. I think Russell Wilson's playing great football right now. I think he, another one like Luck, is a quiet MVP candidate. Although, again, I keep going back, they won't get it. But, He's somebody that should be in the, in the conversation like Luck should be. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't even see this as really a big game. I, I think Seahawks run away with this one. Um, I think it'll be a close game. Just because okay. I don't think Seattle's yeah. defense is that good. I think Cousins will have a good night. I, I think this game ends up being something like 35-28 to 28 or something. I think it'll be a good game. Um, any final words, Anthony, before... Your next show that you'll be on will be next Monday after Steve's Colts have hammered your Cowboys. Yeah, I'm Don't just know looking, about forward. That. I'm not banking I'm looking on forward that. to the game tonight, and I'm, I'm obviously looking forward to the, uh, watching Dallas play next weekend. I think it's going to be a big test for their defense. Well, the saddest thing is the way Risley backs it down. Because, see, before we came on this show, he was telling me that, you know, he was going to talk a, talk a lot of crap to build this up. And now he's kind of just hanging back and saying his team's going to lose. Risley. I'm not saying we're going to lose. I'm just saying it's, it's just tough to fight karma. Okay. Once again, I don't and, understand. And the Cowboys definitely karma. have karma. When, when they win a game like they won Sunday, yesterday, that's karma. Um, and that's very hard to beat. 
kind of like luck. I mean, not Andrew Luck, but the actual concept of luck. Luck generally factors in things about 50% of everything you do. And right now the Cowboys have got some really good luck going their direction. And it's going to be, you know, just the Colts are going to have to play well. All right, guys. Extremely well to win at home against a good, good Cowboys team. Don't forget to check out Anthony Savino on the FF Faceoff on YouTube and on the Grueling Truth Fantasy Football Show. It's as good as any fantasy football show you'll hear. Um, Steve, tomorrow we will be back at noon live on thegruelingtruth.net with Brian Rolfe from Breaking or what was it? Busting Brackets on the fan sided network to talk a little college basketball. There was a big weekend. Gonzaga, who was number one, lost to Tennessee. Indiana beats Louisville. So Brian will be on tomorrow so we can talk a little college basketball. Um, any final words, Steve? Nope. Not until you start talking, then I'll come up with something. I know. All right, guys. Remember, you can follow us at Grilling Truth. If you have any questions, you can tweet them there to me or Steve. Um, Anthony will be back next Monday. Make sure you check that out. And on last Friday, Ed Biles legendary Houston Oilers head coach, also the defensive coordinator for Love You Blue, was on this show to pick games with me and Steve. And he harassed me and Steve and said that, you know, Steve was kind of a woman because he played basketball and they wear shorts and a tank top. And he said that he was going to show us how to pick games. I just want to let you all know that Ed came in third out of the three of us. I'm not sure which one of us has won, but I know it wasn't Ed. All right, guys, we're going to wrap the show up. You can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the grueling truth. So for Anthony Servino, Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.